Welcome to the presentation on the college application process. Please have a pen and paper ready so you can write down any questions you may have. Your child's school counselor is here to guide you through this process, so if you haven't already done so, please have your child reach out to his or her school counselor to schedule an appointment to discuss their college application process. As always, you are more than welcome to join in on the meeting via phone or Google Meet. During tonight's presentation, we will review how to finalize a list of colleges to apply to, the different types of applications, setting up a common application account, the transcript, letters of recommendation, the college essay and supplements, SAT and ACT exams, application deadlines, the college application processing or CAP form, and financial aid night. When trying to decide where to apply, your child should think about several factors. They need to first research schools that have his or her intended major, determine if they want to commute or live on campus, and have a discussion regarding what is financially realistic. Additional thought should be given to the size of the school, the distance, and the type of campus best suited for your child. Next, a list should be compiled that includes REACH, TARGET, and safety schools. REACH schools are schools that have admission criteria above that of your child. So for example, if your child has a 90 GPA or grade point average, and the mean or average GPA of a school is a 95, that would be a REACH school. Target schools are schools where your child meets the criteria of the school, but it is not a guarantee that he or she will get in. For example, if your child has a 90 GPA and the mean GPA of the school is an 89 to a 93, that is a target school. A safety school is a school that you and your child's counselor feel confident that your child will be admitted to. For example, if your child has a 90 GPA and the mean GPA for the school is an 82 to an 87. It is important to remember that admission is never a guarantee even if a school is deemed a safety school. It is also important to realize that some schools with specialized programs have higher criteria for those programs than they do for general admission. There are four types of applications. The common application is accepted at over 900 colleges and universities across the country. When applying via the common application, a student will need to create an account on commonapp.org and complete the application. It takes a bit of time, but once the application is complete, your child can submit his or her application to numerous schools with the click of a few buttons. It is important to remember that many schools have supplemental requirements, so after submitting the common application, your child must see if the college has any additional college-specific supplemental questions in order for his or her application to be considered complete. The application fees vary per school. The SUNY application is an online application that can be used for all SUNY or State University of New York schools. Similar to the Common App, the SUNY application is completed once and then can be sent to multiple SUNY schools. The application fee is $50 per SUNY school. The CUNY, or City University of New York application, can be used for all CUNY schools. The fee is $65. This fee allows your child to apply to up to six schools on one application. Many schools also have their own online application. This is accessed by clicking on the link on the school's individual website. Often, the school will accept either their own online application or the common application. In this case, there is no advantage to one over the other. The colleges have no preference, so choose the application that works best for your child.
When applying via the Common Application, first, your child must create a Common Application account. Please visit our guidance website and look under 12th grade level info for a link to the Common Application Boot Camp form, which will walk you through the steps to creating an account and completing the application, including information on filling out your FERPA release, which I will cover in a later slide. Your child's transcript was posted on the student portal and they have been given an opportunity to review it. The transcript has always been an incredibly important part of the college admissions process, but as many schools are going SAT and ACT optional this year in response to the COVID pandemic, this year, perhaps more so than ever, the transcript will play a vital role. Admissions representatives are reviewing the transcript for not only grades, but also to see what types of classes were taken versus what is offered and whether the student chose to challenge himself or herself during senior year. Many colleges will also require first quarter and or mid-year senior grades. So although the overall grade point average will not be recalculated by H. Frank Carey to include senior grades, Individual schools may choose to recalculate GPAs to include them as a way to determine admission or scholarship eligibility. If your child has not already done so, he or she will have to ask two teachers for a letter of recommendation to be included in their application for admission file. One of these teachers should be a major subject teacher including English, math, science, social studies, or world language. And the other can also be a major subject teacher, or it can be an elective teacher, such as music, art, family and consumer science, or business. It can also be an advisor or a coach. The teacher should be someone who knows your child well and can speak to his or her strengths, character, and work ethic. Once the letter has been written and uploaded to Naviance by the teacher, it is always a nice gesture to write the teacher a note of thanks, as these letters are very time consuming and are done outside of their daily responsibilities to help your child. In addition to the two teacher letters, your child's school counselor will also write a counselor recommendation letter. When completing the common application, it is necessary to complete a FERPA release. Your FERPA release is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, which gives your high school permission to release your transcript and letters. You should waive your rights to see and read your letters of recommendation so colleges know your letters are candid and truthful. That being said, please know that the counselors read all of the letters to make sure they will only help an application. The college essay is an opportunity for your child to tell the admissions representative something about themselves that they might not know from reading other parts of their application. The common application provides different essay prompts that can be used, but also allows the student to write about a topic of his or her choice if he or she prefers. When writing the essay, be unique. Make sure that your child's voice comes through and that they have written about something meaningful that shows a piece of his or her life. The admissions representative should come away from reading the essay feeling like they have gained insight into who the applicant is. This year, the common application has included an optional question pertaining to the current pandemic and how it has personally impacted the, the applicant. This is an optional question and should really only be answered if the student has been profoundly impacted. This impact can be positive or negative depending on the situation or circumstance. As we are all aware, we are living in unprecedented times. Most students have not had an opportunity to take the SAT or ACT more than once and in some cases, not even that. As a result, most colleges have announced that they are going test optional this year. 
Some specialized programs may still require scores, so it is important to do your research, but most schools and programs are waiving the SAT or ACT requirement for this year. That being said, if your child took the exam and did well, he or she can submit their scores through the collegeboard.org or act.org. It is very important to be aware of your school's application deadlines. Applying to a school under early decision and early action agreements requires a student to apply by an earlier deadline. Typically, that deadline is either November 1st, November 15th, or December 1st. If a student is applying to school to a school under early decision, it is important to understand that this is a binding agreement with one school stating that if accepted, you will immediately withdraw all other applications and commit to going to that school regardless of the financial aid received. Please note that it is extremely rare for a student to apply to a school under early decision because of this binding agreement. Early action is similar to early decision, except that it is not binding. In most cases, a student can apply to more than one school under early action without the pressure of a binding agreement. It is important to know though that early action usually puts an applicant into a pool of applicants with higher GPAs and standardized test scores, so it is not always in the student's best interest to apply early action. If you are unsure whether you should apply early action, please speak with your counselor to determine your best course of action. Regardless of whether applying early decision, early action, rolling, or regular decision, it is a good practice to submit applications as early as possible. Please refer to our guidance website to review this chart outlining the differences in more detail. After your child has submitted an application online, he or she must complete the College Application Processing or CAP form located on the guidance webpage. This Google form must be completed for each school your child applies to, one form per school. And it is the only way your child's transcript and letters of recommendation will be sent out to schools. If the college university has multiple campuses, please note on the form the campus to which you are applying. Please fill out the CAP form at least 10 school days prior to the application deadline to allow ample processing time. Please note that if opting to send SAT or ACT scores, they must be sent by the student through collegeboard.org or act.org. There are many different types of financial aid, including loans, grants, scholarships, and work-study. It is important to read your financial aid package carefully to understand the type of aid your child is receiving. The FAFSA, or Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is currently open, so please help your child complete the FAFSA form as soon as possible. You do not have to wait for your 2020 tax returns to file. You can base your FAFSA on your 2019 returns and then update the information once your 2020 returns are available. Additionally, please be aware that many schools require the completion of a CSS profile to acquire additional financial information, so please check to see if your child's school requires this. Also, please be aware that we have an HFC scholarship newsletter that is posted monthly to our website. We are hosting a virtual financial aid night on November 17th at 6.30 p.m. A link will be available prior to the event. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. As mentioned in the beginning of the program, please feel free to contact your child's counselor with any questions you may have and also to schedule a college and career planning meeting with your child if they haven't already done so. 
Thank you so much and have a great night.